Hey everybody, Stu Smith here going live. I hope you are doing well today. Happy Monday. Today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, flexibility, mobility, and stability and how they are intertwined with each other and different. I think a lot of people confuse many of the terms. I know I am kind of lazy when I say I'm doing a mobility day because it's not just mobility. It's a lot of flexibility. It's stability. It's balance. So let's get to it real quick while you guys congregate. And then at the end of this quick five minute discussion, you guys can ask questions about the topic or bring up a new topic if you prefer. Uh, but first, everybody's familiar with flexibility. And the reason why I'm talking about this today, I just wrote this article for military.com today. It is going live there probably tomorrow. I put a little bit of it in the description. <clears throat> if you want to read a little more about it, you can see what it's going to be, at least my rough draft of it. So flexibility, out of all three terms, everybody tends to understand what flexibility is because we bend over, touch our toes. We are stretching our muscles to do that. That's really what flexibility is. It is our soft tissues being able to lengthen without pain. So that is stretching, and that can happen in many movements. You know, anytime you do a bicep curl, you are flexing that muscle up here, but this back side is stretching. So that is part of where flexibility comes into movements, one of many ways. The other one is, the next level is mobility. Now, mobility is a little bit different because now we're talking about movement of the joint. So, for instance, when I bend over and touch my toes, I am stretching my hamstrings, butt, and lower back, maybe a little bit of the calves, depending on how my feet are angled. And uh, the joint that is being tested in that movement is the hip and lower back connection. So, you know, that's a, that's kind of an easy one. An easier one that a lot of people understand is the bicep curl. Like we just mentioned how the top of this muscle or top of this joint is flexing. The bottom of the joint muscle is stretching. So mobility has a little more nuanced element to it because it relies on strength of one muscle group to be able to pull that uh, be able to pull that joint into a certain range of motion whereas the other side of the muscle is allowing it to stretch so it can stretch into that range of motion so your range of motion can be limited by flexibility or strength or both. You don't have the strength to move your arm up this way, then your range of motion will be limited. You don't have the flexibility to allow it to bend in that way. You have a mobility issue. Uh, you know, where I see mobility primarily is in treading. Uh, in fact, I was treading this morning showing a guy that his hips, knees, and ankles were tight and we need to work on some flexibility, mobility issues so he can get into that uh, egg beater position, which is really kind of like a breaststroke position where your ankles are kicked out to the side. You're kicking, almost looks like you're kicking a soccer ball to the bottom of the pool. And if you can't get into that position for one of two reasons, we need to work on either your hip strength and glutes or your inner thigh, uh, hips, and even down there by your ankles, ankle mobility to be able to get into that groove of doing that. So that's where mobility and flexibility are, are intertwined, but there's a strength element to that opposing muscle group in a mobility issue. Now, stability, that takes another level to it. And now you're looking at strength, balance, flexibility, um, and it's also, you know, 
when anytime you're dealing with balance, it is more of a central nervous system uh, component. So, uh, you know, your joint to be able to handle certain movements needs to have strength primarily, but also a range of motion that it can operate in, which is both strength and flexibility of those muscles around that joint. And then the system is kind of graded as a whole on whether or not you can just stand upright. So if you're doing a one-legged knee bend, let's say you're trying to do a one-legged squat, there's a lot of balance involved. There's some knee mobility that's involved, hip mobility. You're stretching the backside of your body. All very important on whether or not you are going to be stable enough to handle that movement. And, you know, I would say the three work hand in hand in that. And I would say probably one of the most important elements of this is adding balance to your flexibility mobility days and then you can start to um, see some more stability in your ankles and knees and hips shoulders even you know when you do a, a one-handed overhand farmer walk for instance um, where you're forcing yourself to balance that uh, weight over your head <clears throat> that's another way to build stability of that shoulder muscle so I would say out of all of the elements, I think all of them, them are important, but if you're trying to prepare for a selection process that has a lot of load bearing, a lot of overhead, carry, press type work, rucking, chest carry out here, squats and lunges, jumps, things like that over soft sand, that is where stability is key to your really health of making it through those challenges. So how do we work on that? Read the uh, description. You'll see some more details on it. But, you know, you can add stability exercises any old time. Like you don't have to add to your workout to do it. In fact, try just standing on one leg while you're doing a standing overhead press or a bicep overhead press, for instance. Um, Anytime you're standing on one leg, you're adding stability to that, you know, whole side of your body. Or at least you're training it to do so. And then if you really want to make it hard, here's where it gets really hard, is close your eyes and stand on one leg. You can try that right now and you'll start seeing what muscles are involved in keeping you upright. And see how those joints are handling your weight from toppling over, that is what stability is. So there's the three. I thought there are three elements that, you know, need to be discussed as well as how easily they can be supplemented into any training program. Yes, I do a mobility day, but my mobility day is a lot of flexibility. It's a lot of movement. It's even one-legged activities, balance activities. So you can add those into a day of itself, followed by some treading or some other skill activity that requires some form of technique and mobility help you to do that. Um, but yeah, check that out. Um, that's why we do mobility day. I do it for much other different reasons because I'm old and I, uh, you know, my joints need the mobility day, but if you're young, you still need to learn how to stretch and move and full range of motion training um, as it will help you with other activities like running, like obstacle courses, treading water, swimming, streamlined body position. All of those things are mobility based, flexibility based. So don't. Skip Mobility Day. In fact, that's one of my favorite articles. Just like you don't skip Leg Day, don't skip Mobility Day. In fact, I'll, I'm going to put this in here just to share it with everybody because, yes, it is that important. So 
check it out. Looks like we got a few questions. We'll take those and we'll get started on this Monday Q and A. Um, how fast should four mile ruck be before shipping out? Good question. Um, here's the minimum on that. You know, the minimum standard for any military training program is a 15 minute mile. So I'm not sure, silly beast monkey, what uh, job you're preparing for, but if you're just rucking, 15 minute mile is the minimum. So you don't want to be any slower than a 15 minute mile with say 40, 50 pound backpack. Now, if you get a 60, 70, 80 pound backpack, that pace gets a little slower, but pretty much 15 minute miles, the minimum. So you don't want to play around with the minimum. I personally recommend doing three types of paces when you ruck. One is the regular walk. And believe it or not, you can come pretty close to a 15-minute mile by just walking. Normal walking pace will get you about a 15-minute mile. Now, if you pump it up a little bit, do more of a uh, power walk, right, where you're really kind of walking with a purpose, not getting winded or anything, just walking fast. Um, you're going to see probably closer to a 13 and a half, 14 minute mile. At least that's tends to be what, what I do. And a lot of guys around me do. Um, then there's the other one, which is a shuffle and the shuffle is a, about a half stride run. So you're not running at full stride, but you're, you have a high cadence, short stride shuffle, and you're just starting to. Yes, you can get winded on this one. And I've seen guys break 10 minutes miles with that one. So that's the way I do it. I'd say, you know, depending on your cadence, you could probably get somewhere between 10 and 12 minute miles with that 40, 50 pound ruck. Um, so I would play around with all three versions, the regular walk, the power walk, and the shuffle run, so to call it, shuffle ruck, to see how well you do on that. And just do a mile of each and see what your times are for each of them. Then you can kind of use all three as a strategy, especially for longer distance rucking events that you have to do. So give that a shot. See what you think. But I would say a four-mile ruck should be around... I'd give around 45 minutes. So what's that? 12, 13. Yeah, about 12 minute mile. Roughly 45, 48 minutes. I'm 190. Bench press is at 15, 25 pound plates at 10. Should I ever think about going heavier on these movements? Um, it's up to you. I mean, there are going to be two tests in your journey, typically for these spec ops fitness tests that are out there. Um, and that are in the range of you know, double digits, as long as you can get, if you can get 20 on a body weight bench and 20 on a 15 or 25 pound plate, that is above average. And you're coming close to that. I would say, you know, at least get both up to 15 and 15 before you start worrying about a strong cycle, but you can, I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing a five by five strength workout. You will get stronger. If you do five by five at like 80% of your one RM, but you got to ask yourself, is that what you really need right now? Do you need to get stronger like that? Um, I wouldn't go heavier on the pull-ups though. Just seeing too many people blow out biceps with heavy pull-ups, depending on their body weight, especially at 190, 200 plus. Started running the Air Force 50 50 on a 230 interval for the Air Force 100 100. Should I keep the ratio the same at five minute interval or 
add in a little more recovery. You know, it's up to you. I'm, I'm going to let you figure that out. My advice is keep your intervals short, your recovery short, because the goal of these workouts is to be able to do it with less recovery. Um, so my advice is be able to do that 50, 50, you know, that's a hundred yards. If you can do that in one thirty ish, you know, that's a really good hundred. One forty is a good, is a good hundred. And then give yourself the rest of that two thirty to rest. It isn't bad. If you can catch your breath by two minutes, even better, 215. You know, so the goal is how quickly can you recover? So flirt around with shortening that recovery and see how you do. Don't rest too long because you go back to a normal state. It's not going to be very uh, productive for you whenever you're being tested on a 130 interval for, say, 50 over unders right so or not 50 but you know 25 25 over under on a 130 you know that's that's not a bad that's not a bad recovery time with the 230 you're 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 faster than that so i like that but if you keep the same ratio i think that would be fine too but remember the goal is short shorten the recovery by two things, getting in better shape and being more efficient in your swimming will also keep your heart rate down. Currently, I'm on day seven of that push-up protocol to increase push-ups next week. I'll give you a feedback. Good. Is it normal to feel myself tired or with pain? Uh, not normal to feel pain, but you definitely tired. Like by seven, eight, nine, and ten, you're probably not doing very well, like with your reps. So you really need that day 11, 12, 13 as a rest, half of 14, even. In fact, when you test, test on day 14 later in the day after you have, uh, you know, eaten something, you know, slept well. You know, you can still work out those days, just don't do any pushing activities no overheads no bench press nothing like that on days 11 12 13 14 until you test on day 14 then you can do you recommend bulletproofing and if so what are basic important parts of the body to focus on for the tactical athlete um i've heard the term bulletproofing before and that's really basically what i just talked about you know, having a foundation of strength, flexibility, mobility that leads to stability. So, yes, you know, some people may define bulletproofing uh, differently than I do. Um, you know, I consider it more of a durability goal. And if you ever look at my um, if you've ever looked at my tactical athlete, uh, Venn diagram, in fact, I'll pull it up for you. If you haven't seen it, got it around here somewhere. Um, it is a, uh, it's a good one to, to check out because it has a little bit of everything. The active duty operator needs these things in fact let me uh let me share my screen with you and you will see where bulletproofing if you will what that actually means i think it means this all right tactical athlete here's what we need for durability strength power speed agility aids into our durability though th there's more to it too Aerobic, anaerobic conditioning, muscle stamina, that's our work capacity. You know, you need that too. Um, learn how to recover. Stress mitigation, that's physical stress. 
mental stress, emotional stress, recovery is key, nutrition, sleep, mobility, flexibility, all part of it. And notice I got a whole thing right here for stability. You know, that's a whole lot of job skills, you know, how quickly you can learn tactical skills. That's very important. Uh, your coordination of your movements, that's going to lead to stability and mindset. You know, you're, you know, positive or negative in your mindset, right? That will add to longevity, yes, but it will also add to um, optimal performance. So I would say if you're looking at bulletproofing, you're looking at these two sides right here. Durability and stability. Those are the key to that. I hope that makes sense for you. What workout do you recommend to increase freestyle speed? Um, well, I don't really play around with freestyle other than for rescue swimmers and Air Force Special Warfare guys. They can swim freestyle, so you will see a lot of freestyle in this one, if you so choose. A lot of workouts there for freestyle, but there's a lot for CSS as well. In fact, you might have heard the guy talking about the Air Force 5050 up here. Tristan asked about the Air Force 5050 and the Air Force 100 You Google that, you will see it. Let's see. Is water the only thing they drink at Bud's? Um, hmm. No. I drink chocolate milk when I'm in the chow hall. Drink Gatorade. Some electrolyte drip drop if it's really sweaty. <clears throat> but yes, water is significant. Your program to double pull-ups really works. I went from zero to four. Huh. I'm amazed. Damn. That's pretty good. I will tell you this. Zero to one is exceptional because that first pull-up is the hardest. That first pull-up is a strength exercise. The fifth, tenth, twentieth is more of a endurance exercise, if you would. But it is founded in strength. So good job. Zero to four. Whew, that's a lot. Should you be rucking prior to buds? Um, I would, especially if you don't have a log or a boat to simulate load bearing. Rucking is a great way to do it. And if you don't have soft sand, get on a stair stepper with your ruck or weight vest and do some stair stepping. That will, if you want to bulletproof something, that will bulletproof your legs for sure. Got a funny question for you. What's the worst PST times you've seen or heard of someone making it through buds? Uh, not funny. I mean, it used to be a uh, used to be a thing where you could get in and go to buds with the minimum standards, which were like six pull ups, twelve minutes, eleven thirty swim, twelve thirty run, or vice versa. I can't remember. Like I said, I don't deal in minimums. Uh, 50 push-ups, 50 sit-ups. Um, I think those were the minimums. But I've seen guys not do well on the PST before. And it was like day one of BUDS. It was You had to pass the PST to go into BUDS. And I don't know if they were just skating it because they knew all they had to do was pass or that was what their maximum effort was. You know, everybody else there was like cranking out reps just to see where they stood against other members in the class. But there were some that were flirting with the minimums. I remember we had, I know we had like a barely past the CSS swim guy, but he put on a pair of fins and was top five swim pairs. He just was a football player that couldn't swim without fins he put on fins and was like a torpedo in the water, just powered through the water with those big old football legs. So he didn't have any problem with the two mile ocean swims, which some of the guys that were really fast 
non-fin swimmers did because they just didn't have big legs and they didn't have mobile ankles enough to power those. So that was that was big. Um, seen some guys every week barely pass the the run, you know, the four mile timed run, and they also barely passed the mile and a half getting in, but they did, and never got through, or never um, never quit. Just gut checked everything. I mean, put it this way: if you're going in with minimum scores of anything, or you have uh, an undeveloped weakness that maybe you just discovered whenever you first started treading and that happened to be at prep or first started swimming with fins and that's at prep, you're going to have to gut check some things to get through. And that's just what they did. You know, they were just tough enough mentally to be able to say, all right, game time. This is my capstone project of the day and I got to put out on this and engage mental toughness to get through it. Whereas guys who were conditioned didn't have to engage mental toughness to get through that next event. So I was always under the uh, mindset that, you know, I didn't want to engage mental toughness every single day if I didn't have to, right? There were events where I had to if I wanted to run fast, I needed to engage mental toughness. If I had to swim fast, not a big deal. I could actually swim fast with fins. Wasn't that big a deal. Didn't have to engage mental toughness. I found those hours in the in the water were kind of a uh, kind of a break from getting yelled at, you know, because they weren't yelling at you when you were swimming for an hour. Um, so here's the deal, though. If you have a weakness going into any of these selection programs, it will be exposed immediately. And then you have a choice. You have a choice of working harder to make it less of a weakness in a very short period of time, which you might have time to do that in prep. Or you will just have to gut check it every time you do it and just meet the standard. You know, I try to get everybody down to a 28 minute four mile timed run, but you got 32 minutes to fail it. So, you know, that's a whole nother minute per mile to uh, to fail. So you want some gravy time on some of these events. Otherwise, I mean, if you're just squeaking by, you know, with seconds to spare, that's that's a tough way to go through training. But it is a possible way to go through it. So I'm not not knocking it. You know, I've seen many people do it. Same way, you know, when people go through Hell Week twice. You know, that's another one. It's just like, you really don't want to do that. But people have, and they've gotten through. Good morning, sir. This afternoon, I'm starting your SEAL Phase 1 program. Good. Yeah, I don't have a copy of that one, I don't think. I think I sent them all out. It's a good one. Good luck with it. You guys got any more questions for me? One thing I'm doing is uh, I'm coming up with these little mini courses. And they're going to be very similar to a, one of these live Q&As, but it's going to be focused on one event. And when I mean one event, like... I think this first one I'm making is going to be probably about an hour long and it's going to focus on getting to and through training, you know, with a fitness test. And then the following training part two of that little course will be, you know, getting through the training and it just kind of lays out a path for you a little bit differently than these Q and A's are because these Q and A's are kind of a, you know, what I try to answer in a couple of minutes for you and get to the next question. So they kind of bounce everywhere. This is going to be a laser focused uh, video coaching video shared, you know, people swimming and running techniques and pull up, push up, sit ups. You know, we'll go through all of the different tests probably. And I'm going to post them on my uh, membership site and that membership site 
you can find it on Stu Smith Fitness. Um, and what you get, you get a lot more than that. There's actually five years of workouts in a database where you can just go through and pick beginner workouts. You can pick, you know, spec ops level workouts that I've been doing for the last five years with all the SEAL candidates and SF candidates that go through here. And you can kind of see the progression of how these workouts go, but you have access to all of them. You also have, you know, every week I post new videos, new uh, articles, and they're all part of that kind of a newsletter that's a database of workout articles, videos. And uh, so that, that's what we're doing over there at uh, Stu Smith fitness.com going to be adding in these courses and I'm going to do it for, you know, the phases of tactical fitness, specific fitness tests. So like the FBI fitness test, I must treat it like an FBI fitness test clinic and walk people through all the different techniques to improve on all the events. Same for seal, you know, other tests out there. Um, yeah, and then probably do one on mental toughness because I, I think I've written about and talked about mental toughness in a while, you know, it, it, ad nauseum, but I haven't really laser focused on that process. Um, so to be just a little extra stuff that I think will be nice to just store on the, the membership site and you can get to it all you want. Let's see. Nicholas says, um, are you part of the Spec Ops team at USNA? I have been part of the Spec Ops team there since 2008. So when they created it, they asked me to be their coach. And I said, sure, let's do it. And so what's that? Uh, 16 years now? Yeah. So it's fun. I, I enjoy it. It's a great, great club. Let's see. You guys got any more questions for me? Nicholas, are you going to the academy? Thinking about it? My buddy, Mikhail, how are you? What's going on there in Denmark? Let's see. I'm trying to see if I missed any questions. I'm not sure if I did or not. Nope. I did not miss any. If you got any, send them. Oh, got a couple more here. Let's see. Tommy says, uh, started phase one Navy PST program. I know it's hard to improve both cardio and calisthenics at the same time. Actually, it's not. They actually work really well together. Should I try to emphasize one over the other? No. Calisthenics and cardio improve very well together. That's why we do the cycles the way we do in tactical, seasonal tactical fitness periodization. Like spring and summer is a buildup of calisthenics and cardio because muscle stamina and endurance go hand in hand. What doesn't go hand in hand with that is strength training. Now, you can maintain all of them together. Absolutely. You can do strength training and calisthenics and cardio if you just want to kind of maintain where you want to go. But if you want to improve any of them, it's difficult to get stronger, to gain weight uh, whenever you are adding in a lot of higher reps and mileage, running, swimming, other cardio events. So we tend to drop the cardio a little bit during the winter lift cycles. So we can actually put on some mass, but we change the speed of that cardio. Yes, it may be less running volume, but higher running speed because speed, agility, strength, power, those all work together. Just like I showed you on that tactical athlete Venn diagram, you can kind of see the elements of fitness that work well together. The ones that are building durability are, you know, Strength, power, speed, and agility. The ones that are building work capacity are aerobic conditioning, basically anaerobic conditioning, and cows and cardio. <clears throat> so 
those two work together. If your weaknesses are cows and cardio, good for you because that those were my weaknesses. I was a strength athlete going through my whole teenage years. You know, running long distance was a mile, mile and a half run was long distance. You know, calisthenics, you know, I might have done pull-ups, but treat them like a strength exercise. I wasn't really trying to do 20 of them. Um, so, yeah, cows and cardio work real well together at the same time. Did the death by push-ups today. Somehow I didn't feel like it never gets easier. Complete torture. Yeah, I would agree with that. Also, Mobility Day is a hit with the dudes I train where I'm stationed. Yeah, good for you. Yeah, mobility, uh, death by push-ups is, it just sucks. It's more of a mental grind, I think, than anything. Yeah, shoulders hurt a little bit, but if you don't know what death by push-ups is, it is one of my favorite little drills now that many of the fitness tests have changed to plank poses and push-ups instead of push-ups and sit-ups. So what we do is we get really good at plank posing by, guess what? You got it, plank posing. So you're in a plank position, but every minute on the minute, you can hop up in the push-up position, crank out 10 push-ups, and then you have a choice. You can kind of stick around the up push-up position or go back to the plank pose, but every minute on the minute, you do 10 push-ups. How long can you do that for? We should do it for 10 minutes, but we'll build up to it with five-minute sets first. If you've never done it, it's hardcore. Uh, I want to join it this year. I've been doing Captain Frankie's assault bike workouts. Yes, I'm going to the academy currently at NAP. So good. Yeah, Captain Frankie loves those assault bikes. <laughs> um... Mikael's doing great, having no issues with shins. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I know that, that was really beating you up for a while. We'll DM you at uh, start of March regarding coaching as we've gotten more stable schedule now. Good, man. Always, always available for return PT club members. I'll graduate from Naval Academy Prep this May, join USNA in June. Good. I'll see you there, plebe summer. I'm usually running around. You'll see me. Is log PT and boat PT the only weights used at BUDS? Rucking and people. You will carry, firemen carry somebody great distances as well. But yes, pretty much log, boats, rucking, and people. Those are the four load-bearing activities. Oh, scuba tanks. You'll You'll be walking a lot with scuba tanks too. That's about it for load bearing. So if I did miss your question, I apologize. So you can always email me, Stu at StuSmith.com right here on this little ticker. Just email me. And uh, if you stuck around this long, you can go to StuSmithFitness.com, save 15% on books and ebooks. If you're looking for a program, we have them. I'm not sure what weighted breath holds are. Like put on a weight vest and go to the bottom. Never done it. Now we do weighted treads, weight vest or not weight vest, but a weight belt tread with scuba tanks on with fins. You don't want to go to the bottom. So Joe, not sure. Not sure where these questions come from, Joe, but. They're always entertaining. Um, you guys got anything else? I got a probably time for one more question, and then I got to get moving to the next event. You guys got any questions? Just let me know. Happy to uh, answer them. Um, I'll share tomorrow. I'll share this uh, article I'm working on link to you guys because there's some good stuff in here you know neat ways to increase mobility add stability to your day but it's got some good ones too so some good science behind it as well all right looks like uh yep 
Michael, I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be a um, CSS day. So send in a CSS if you have them. I got a couple of new ones I'm going to post up here of uh, guys doing the CSS. Maybe some underwater swims, treads. I'll get my GoPro out again and uh, film some people doing stuff underwater. I like those GoPros. They tend to uh, get a good angle that it's kind of hard to see sometimes uh, on top of the water. All right. Well, folks, I got to run. Uh, it's been fun. I will see you guys tomorrow if you want to join me. Same time, 930 East Coast time. Uh, in the meantime, check out Stu Smith Fitness for tons of articles and programming. And save 15% with the live 1-5 coupon code for sticking around this long. I appreciate it. We will see you guys later.